You're watching Telecom TV's exclusive video coverage of the MEF annual members meeting in Vancouver. And I'm joined now by Ralph Santatoro, who is Director of Solutions Architecture at Fujitsu Network Communications. Ralph, thanks for talking with Telecom TV. Oh, thank you very much. Um, Ralph, you're also MEF Distinguished Fellow. Um, what are the issues that the MEF needs to address at the moment and indeed is proactively looking at? Well, the MEF, uh, since its inception, really wanted to standardize carrier Ethernet across the board. We've done that. Carrier Ethernet is the foundation of all telecom services today, the fastest growing type of wide area networking service. So we've established that presence in the market through our certification programs and our technical specs. The next step what's happening in the market is we're moving into a more software defined virtualized world. And where the MEF is moving now is we're talking about taking services and being able to make those dynamic, on demand and virtualized so that you have a unique customer experience that pretty much follows the same as a cloud experience. So with a cloud service, I can order it, I can change the order, I can modify it pretty much on demand. We need to make wide area networking services do the same thing. So tell me about the MEF's vision of enabling the delivery of, the, of services that are agile, that are assured and are orchestrated. Right, so as part of our third network vision, delivering agile, assured and orchestrated services, the first part of that is to be able to develop what we're calling lifecycle service orchestration. And so this is functionality in the network that allows you to be able to offer a dynamic on-demand type of service so the user can basically go into a customer portal, order a service, just like they order cloud service, and order it, modify it, change it. This requires a very different way to uh, design and build networks where you now need lifecycle orchestration to be able to manage all the different parts of the network and technologies programmatically through open and standard APIs. Now, you, you mentioned the, the third network strategy. You're the author of, of, this, of this vision. Um, why the third network? What does it mean? So the, the third network, uh, we coined the phrase the third network because if you look at the most ubiquitous network in the world is the internet. Mm -hmm. You have carrier ethernet or carrier ethernet 2.0 as defined by the MEF. And we're taking the best of the internet and the best of carrier ethernet and in creating, combining those, the benefits of both of those to deliver the third network. So why should service providers be interested in this? Why should they make the investment in this technology? Well, I think if you look at traditional wide area networking services today, their, their transport or uh, type connectivity services, customers, that, that's your baseline type of service. It's becoming more commoditized in the market. And, and just to compare a transport service to use maybe a, a residential analogy, right? You have pipes for plumbing for your water, you, you have electricity, you have, these are the baseline services. They're very, very important services, but what's more important is adding these value added services on top. So you have your baseline service, carrier ethernet, and now you want to add additional services that the customer would want to add to the network, like virtual network services. So will we need sort of carrier grade APIs to, to connect these services? Yeah, the APIs are there to be able to pro programmatically control the network and allow for automated billing and automated ordering, and then the customer can order services right through a, perhaps a customer web portal. Today, services are ordered to get on the phone, you call the service provider, and you know maybe weekdays or weeks or months later, you get the service. That type of model, uh, end users are not, uh, with, especially with the, the cloud world today, where you can actually order storage on demand or, cl or cloud computing on demand infrastructure as a service. There's a paradigm shift in the market where people are expecting these on demand, on uh, um, agile types of services. And, and the wide area networks or carry ethernet networks really need to evolve to that because the, the expectation has already been set in the cloud space. Will it require all service providers and operators to, to adopt the same principles in order for this to work for enterprises? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. Um, initially, the individual operators will, will implement this, and some are in various stages of implementing it today. They do offer on-demand capabilities, sometimes, sometimes bandwidth on-demand, for example. But in order to, uh, one operator never is able to deliver a service in all, all the regions or footprints that their enterprise customers uh, are in. And so they have to partner with other operators. And so that partnership requires them to have peering agreements. And so hence, um, in order to provide that third network experience end to end, each of the operators will eventually have to support the third network principles. And finally, when the industry gets together in Dallas at the end of the year at Gen 15, what are going to be the main talking points? What, are, what is the industry going to be focused on? 
Oh, that's a good question. So, well, the industry is focused on software-defined everything and network functions virtualization, basically taking network functions today that are delivered in boxes and being able to deliver them as apps. And so that's a really huge area. But I think in Gen, in Gen 15, one of the interesting things we're doing is our proof of concept showcase. Very, very popular last year. We've expanded that. And that's going to allow people to see the MEF work in action. People actually take work that's a work in progress, actually implement parts of it, show it off, and then feed that back into the MEF to further develop the standards. We're off to look forward to that. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.